had uh, so when you when you came back after the war, had fishing changed? No, there was no room for fishing to change. There, you would more or less say most class ship was used were well, used used for building new ships, either men of war or, or, or trawlers, but faster trawlers, looking ahead, but they were built for war for a start and then they just reverted to the trawlers once the war for But that was and your kind of fishing wasn't you weren't trawling, no, you were like We fishes. were just we were just a small small variety. <laughs> 34 or 35 foot boats. So uh, you came back and you did, were you saying you went back out to sea with your father as you had been before the war? Yeah. Um, so what What did you, was he the skipper? He, I. So he, he was the skipper? He owned the boat. So what, what did you do on the boat? What were your well, you, tasks? You, you had the, your lines. No, a line was a three quarters of a mile long, 1200 hooks at space to a certain distance along. And the woman had to get up in the morning, shell the mussels, and then put the mussels on the hooks. And they laid them in what we call a skull across the cross. Now each man carried a skull with a line. Was the skull that sort of wooden uh, no, uh, wicker yeah, basket thing? The curry. <coughs> <coughs> well, each one each man carried a skull, you see, so you'd four skulls or five depending on how many a crew how big a boat was. And you just went to see, shot them over the side, hauled them behind brought the man, all in was done behind. It was a uh, laborious way of doing it. So, I mean, it was heavy, right? If uh, You only got, you only got one shot a day. <coughs> How heavy? Well, so I was just saying, was there just, was there one line out the back of each boat, or was mm -hmm. it? So just one line out the back of each boat. <coughs> but it would have been hard work to haul them back yeah, then, right? Because... The lines were bent on to each other. So that each boat was laying three to four miles of line. Oh right, okay. You see, and then you just hauled the box in really, and you just took a uh, hauling five strings at a time. So doing the next team stood up and the rest of the crew sat around the basket, took the fish off, folding them in the boxes, brought them in here. So pulling that in with like laden with fish must have been uh, physically difficult. The, that, that, that's only one side, but the trawlers, they, they improved quite a bit, you see. Where the fact that trawling gear was pretty near to the best uh, mine shooting equipment they had. So uh, the trawler men were a very handy Handy crews have a run. They knew the I think the quirks of working with waves and deep water and shallow water, what what have you. What because they've been doing mine sweeping in the war? Well they had to sweep up the mines that were left. Oh right, okay. I I the mines that were the mine fields that had, were laid had to be cleared and to try and make sure they had them on. And every now and again there was another one turning up and washed us, broken and drafted sometime or another. Oh, it was by accident, pay something. So you're always on the lookout for something. So, um, you were saying the women baited the lines. Baited the lines. That was like. That was a day's work. But, so, I mean, but I mean, like, if you were. That would be like a, a, a wife or a, a fisherman's wife was a slave. She had to get up in the morning and shell the mussels, put them on the line, and she, and and along with that, 
She had to cook for her family and see them get to school and all the rest of it. She was a brilliant slave. So I, I, I remember, do you remember you got interviewed by the woman from the University of Aberdeen about this kind of thing? I was reading that and she was saying that um, you were saying the women uh, who were doing this work, you know, unpaid effectively, um, they should have got waged, they should have been paid a wage. That's true. Why, so why, could you explain a bit more about that? Eh? Could you explain why you thought that would have been a good idea? Well, <laughs> it was a case. Uh, you had a crew. <laughs> the, f the fishermen absolutely depended on their wife getting a job. So it was, there was only one job considered. But it was, she was working a full day and you were working a full day. You were only just getting one wage at the end of the week. Mind, uh, when you look at it, it would only resulted there would have been very little difference because it would have just been instead of four shares it would have been eight and uh, uh, if it was 40 pound it, you would have got five pound each and that would have been the case. Yeah. Well, I seem that to... wouldn't have made no much difference as far as that's concerned but the bit was that the fishermen uh, well after the war they got uh, insurance Unemployment insurance. Like national insurance. The woman didn't get that. So if they if they, they'd been paid, they had to, they had to fight for their uh, right. The, the housewives never got paid for better nights. Never. So if you um. So e even though, in terms of the amount of money as a family you got paid, wouldn't have been that much difference because. Instead of the man getting ten pounds, it would be the man and the woman each got five pounds. Uh, right. You would, if there were periods of unemployment, the women, if the women had been paid, they would the, be eligible the, for. Na they would pay national insurance. The man and his wife was one unit. They were the earners. They went to see. He went to see best. And it was just a piece. They just got one wage for the two. Whereas, uh, and I mean single. Uh, ladies, they learned the bit as well. They've been doing it all their lives, but uh, they were they they got, but then they only got about twenty one children a week. Uh, compared to for bare lines. So it's if if undervalued. if you were to go to sea, you had to get your two lines, and you had to get a, a woman to volunteer the bed and for for bearing, for putting the, the bait on that line, she got three shillings a day. All her work, that's it. Taking muscles out of the shells, putting them on, and that was her. Three bob a day, 21 shillings a week. How, how, did that that, pay. how did that compare to men's pay for going out on oh, the boats? It, it, it was just a job. But uh, you see, again, Uh, where can I put it? That was like all oh, the young girls that grew up here. You had the, you had the, go, going to see, getting, uh, taking on the bit of line for three bow. There was a factory, a jute factory along the road. But they weren't paying much more, if any more. There was, uh, there was plenty of labour, woman labour, coming through all the time. She Dundee was the big port for for jute here, all the East Coast. Oh, that's, every in this place is jute, jute mills, I think there was four in Berby. Oh, uh, right. One here, one in Johnson. Every little, every little uh, p uh, place that had a, could muster each day or ninety, they all had their jute mill. That's what the lads had built. 
the bone who says on the river day with the prophets after more their war work and left the prisoners and all that with in the dark. I'm telling you, it was a hard struggle. So you were talking about shares in the, you were talking about if the man and the women got paid for the fish that came in, you would just have to double the amount of shares so there would be eight shares instead of four shares. Could you explain a bit more about what the shares thing was when you were going out fishing? Well, when you went to sea, you went to sea and you, you, what the fish you got, you put on the pier here in boxes. And the fish merchants, they went down the pier and they bought the fish. And once they'd bought them, they did the curing. So you see, it depended a great lot on, if there was a lot of fish being landed, the prices were low. If there was scarce fish, the prices were high. Therefore, the value of fish actually in the shops differed quite a bit for day to day or for week to week. Well, you see, your crew, you'd a crew of four to a fishing boat, and you'd four lines. Well, you want to see, and if you got ten pound for this day's shot and twelve pound for the next day's, uh, uh, it was all added up. The expenses were taken off, the cost of muscles, and the skipper got the bought the bag, bag, and then it was shared out. And five, the board got a share to keep her running, and that, that so far practically the other boats had five, five shares getting to sea. And every week, it just varied every week according to what come in. So was it, so it was shared completely equally? Yeah. Okay. And uh, if you put a, if you had a hundred pound this week, which was, at that time was very rare, you got 25 pound. If it was 50 pound, you got five, 10 pound. So is this on a daily basis you would yeah. do this? How how often did you go out in the week? Did you go out five every days day, a week? Every, every day, Monday to Friday, with our program. And uh, you, did, you squared up every Saturday, and that was your wages for the week. OK. Um, what... So what what happened if the weather was bad? You just had to stay at home. So you just had to sort of tighten your belt? You, that was one day must. That was a day or an off. Or else, yeah, well, it wasn't a must because you was preparing new gear and you knew you was going to need shortly, such as setting up new line and looking over the overhaul and the, your line is just to keep them up, up to scratch. Oh, so you would just spend the time doing yeah. other keeping, sort of admin, keeping not your, admin. Keeping your gear up to scratch. Okay. Oh, so, what what was your um what was your day like in terms of uh, and also like so so sort of what I want to know is when did you get up and go to see. When did the women get up to start well, baiting the lines and all that? Like, the, what was an average day like? The idea of working lines, you laid your lines as near to daylight coming up and, and, and the day. So you had five days, Monday to Friday, you could go in to see, starting at daylight coming in, and then you had to do that. Daylight come in, and whenever you started, you had to go through, through the whole process and prepare the next one for the next day. So it was a continuous progress. One line a day you took to see. Each one. So a, a boat before we had a three mile stretch and you went out, shoot, uh, laid your lines, lay about 20 minutes to give them a chance to fish. 
haul them up, take the fish off the line, into the boxes, on the pier, on the pier, the fish merchants come down, they bought them with a the, with the hundred weight, took them to the fish houses round the, round the boat, and uh, cured them, split them, cleaned them, and prepared them. The biggest in the uh, stuff, we all went by train to market, so the trains were busy, and that, and that, that was the, the daily. Where, where was the market? Well, they send them, they send the fish for here to London. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well. Or Leeds or Manchester. Just where they, they could, where they got a good price. Sure. So, like, when would you, when would you get up? Uh, when when would you get up? When would you wake up to get ready to go out to see? Well, uh, that, that again varied every day with the tide. The tide is an hour an hour later every day. You see, being high water. Well, you're trying to work over the high water or the low water, but it doesn't matter. There's a an hour between it, low water, and then a full on the low water, and you try to work over the. The, the, when the tide was, when the run was so strong. Because out there when the same tide's running, it runs at a fair rate. Runs faster than you think. But like roughly? And it was all on your hands. It's all done by hand. So, but I mean roughly whenabouts would this be? Would you be getting up in the middle of the night or sort of at dawn? Well, you, uh, you started your day, day as near to dawn as possible, every day. It was earlier... Oh, I'll get that. Earlier... Hello, Davidson's buildings. Steer clear. But, uh, was... Sorry, what was that? I could steer clear, but... Uh... I, I, sorry, I didn't get the earlier bit. But, uh, I mean, it was a case of being as near to daylight you yeah, fast as possible. Now I'm speaking about for dark to, for dark to break the sunshine. The sun just rising, just breaking the horizon was considered a good time. But you see, you couldn't do that every day. There was too many boats around about you, and they were out the art jiggering for the fit they thought was the best position. And, so when did you uh, when did you come in? When did you like bring your haul back? Well, you you you, you laid your lines and you you lay about twenty minutes, and then you started the haul for one end, the same end, and hauled the haul back. So no fail. So you come out. It took about three hours to haul back. All going, all going, going on. So when would you come back into harbour? Well, as soon as you're home. You come back, brought your line man. You had to clear that line and make it ready for burning the next day. You was clearing one for the when the wife was burning the other. And that's the way it was on the airport. Because uh, mum was saying she remembers when her and Isabel, they would come home from school to have lunch. And you would come in and have lunch, and then you would go off to sleep at like midday, so that you'd be able to wake up in the night to go out again. Yeah. Is that right? I would say, you were right away at the bottom 12. Depending on the time of year, and how far you had to sail, And how far you had to sail. You were trying to be on the fishing ground you intended at high water or low water. So it varied you know it it like the the every day. Yeah. And I strub out the, uh, the hole to put it in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I step to <laughs> The time varied every day. So you started off, we'll say, at one o'clock, leaving the house at one o'clock on Monday morning. 
by Thursday or Friday, it might be uh, three o'clock. You were leaving. Or the, the, the flood making and breaking. You were working according to the tides. Trying to high water. Or you always tried to work on the, the low, the lows and the high. Because that was when the tide turned. Oh, <laughs> 